So I'm on here to share a vision with you guys, but I'm looking at this uh, journal I got. My husband got this for me with like a, a pen that came with it. <laughs> I'm looking at it and I never really noticed before that this journal has a train on it with a wing and it says number seven. And there's a key on the back too. That's just so cool. It's supposed to be, you know, a gadget. It says time machine. There's nothing like a dream to create the future, which we know God creates the future. But we also know God gives us uh, dreams sometimes that tell of the future. And with God, all of these things just connect. And that's just so awesome. I just thought that was so awesome, just sitting here looking at that. But anyway, <clears throat> um, I had written this vision. I had this vision yesterday morning. Uh, I wrote it in my journal, and I'm going to read it to you guys from my journal just because I don't want to miss any details. I tried writing down all the little details, so... Alrighty. I went into my quiet time when I went into a vision with the Lord. Beforehand, I was praying to the Lord in spirit, telling him that I want to be close to him, just like how close him and Enoch were and are. He comforted me and led me spiritually into a cave. He was walking ahead of me with his hand stretched stretched back holding my hand and leading me as I was following him I felt uncomfortable by the darkness that was around us <clears throat> but then I remembered Jesus is the light when I remembered this I began to see some fuzzy light coming off of him I knew I was seeing it dimly and hazy because of my faith and because the Lord didn't want me to be as the song goes blinded by the light mm -mm. I literally wrote it that way because, come on, let's just, you gotta have fun. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, he led me through. Some thoughts of fear came through, and I was given a knowing that it was only a battle in my mind, not the truth. Then I continued to follow Jesus through the cave. I looked down at his feet because it was so creepy everywhere else. But he was the only light and the only good thing in that cave. He led me around the corner. And I'm guessing he moved a stone or something because I didn't see the light pouring into the cave from what I was now facing. <clears throat> it was beautiful. It was magnificent. I couldn't see it clearly, but I knew it was amazing from the little bit that I could see. Suddenly I saw a swirling colorful wind come down and I knew it was the Apostle John, one of Jesus' disciples on earth, the one who shared revelation in the Bible. I just went into that little side note for whoever ends up reading this someday. It was interesting because I was given a knowing of things just as they were being shown and spoken, as if it was everything was telepathic. I saw Jesus and John talking. I wanted to hear, so I leaned in. They laughed and found me adorable. <laughs> they were talking about 17 feet away from me. I was still standing in the opening of the cave. They called me forward. I began to imagine being sucked into the cave by evil entities. This was from my fear. I was given a knowing that this was a mind battle. <clears throat> I thought about how I wanted to run to the Lord, and so I did and was brought out. Then I was standing in front of John with Jesus at a bit of a distance. I knew Jesus wasn't going to go anywhere and that he was patiently waiting with joy and peace. I knew him and John were confident in what they had brought me there for. As I stood before John, he told me comforting things about Abba and his love for me and all of his children. With a bit of sadness in my heart, I shared that I wanted to be as loved and as close to Jesus as John and other elders and disciples were and are. He smiled and told me that I was as loved as all of them and that position of greater and lesser doesn't determine the level of love that God the Father, Abba, has for all his children. He said he loves us equally, but differently, because we are all so different. I laugh because that's what I say about my children. John knew, and it was fun how he connected with me like that. I would always say, I love my children equally, but I love them differently. 
because they're two different people. So it was just really awesome that John used like that saying with me. That was just so cool. I asked him about recent events where I was bitter, stubborn, and slow to forgiving people. He chuckled kindly and said as if Abba was speaking through him, that I was loved and forgiven, that Abba knew of all these moments and when they'd happen. I asked about things I've bought and how they may be a waste of money and how I didn't want to be part of the world. I was told to my spirit that my stubbornness, poor habits, and poor choices were known and God has so much mercy. I was told, do you think Abba doesn't know that you are in flesh and struggle? I laughed inside. <laughs> he told me Abba changes us in his timing and that many things will get easier. I knew I'd continue to struggle and make poor choices while I'm here and that I'd grow as I go until I leave this earth and am fully transformed and renewed. And then I thought to myself how, how I couldn't see John or anything clearly. I wondered if it was due to my lack of faith mixed with being in sin-stained flesh mixed with God's will. Then John had me look down into a puddle. He asked if I could see him. I said yes. I could see him much clearer in the puddle. He asked if I could see myself. At first I couldn't. Then I looked closer and I saw myself waving at me with a smile on my face. I knew I was in my glorified body and I knew glorified me was smiling nostalgically at me as if I was a part of her past. John told me I was there and will be there. He told me how everything that speaks otherwise isn't true and is a battle. I mentioned all the pain and health issues I'm having in my fleshly body, and he smiled confidently and told me to embrace them. He told me so compassionately how he knows that it feels like forever when we're here, but it's not. And that was it. That was the vision that I had. And it was so wonderful, and I haven't had a vision like that in a while. Um, I wanted to share that for three reasons. And I received confirmation this morning about this too. One is fear. We all know fear is an enemy. We all know that fear is not of God. The only thing we are to fear is God. Otherwise, all fear is of the enemy. So we know that, but I love how he broke it down to me um, in my spirit. It was just a knowing that was put in my spirit telepathically during this vision <clears throat> that every single time I went to a fear state and imagined something horrible, it was a battle in my mind. And this sounds really obvious, but sometimes, sometimes you just need to be refreshed. Sometimes, you know, you'll hear the same thing and it hits you different. Um, that's kind of what happened to me. You know, these are things that I know, but it's like sometimes I hear things that I know and I'm refreshed and it hits me different um, and at the right time. So I wanted to share that. Also, <clears throat> this was really personal uh, and I shared a bit of my struggles through that about wanting to be loved so deeply by the Lord. Some insecurities that I have um, that I'm uh, going through and battling through. And so I, I basically shared that with you guys. It's very personal. But in case anyone else is battling that, it was so merciful and wonderful that the Lord shared with me through John that we're loved equally, but differently because we're different. And that was just so wonderful to hear. Because that's just all of us, you know? Like, that's for everyone. Um, and then the other thing was my health. Uh, I don't fully know what's going on with my health. My joints all pop. They hurt. I have almost constant joint pain. My bones hurt. My muscles hurt. My whole body basically hurts. Pain's only been getting worse uh, within a span of three years since I first got my injury to my neck and back. Um, but it's like, it's progressed a lot. Um, not in a good way. It's, um, progressively gotten worse, I guess you could say in the past handful of months. And, um, 
and I was just like, Lord, like what's going on? It's getting to the point where the bottom half of my legs and uh, from like just under my knees down and under my elbows down to my hands, I'm starting to get uh, what feels like I'm getting constricted. Feels like I'm not getting good blood flow. I start going a little tingly and numb sometimes. I'm just like, Lord, what's going on? But just how, you know, I brought that up and John said, embrace it. With such a, I mean, he was so confident when he smiled and even chuckled in such a compassionate, mature and confident way. And I knew, and it was so humbling and it felt like, it feels like a gift. And I just remember how you know we carry our cross with the lord daily um suffering through this life instead of being a part of it and just being you know rich in this world but suffering through certain things with the lord grieving through certain things with the lord being at peace in our suffering being at peace in our in our grieving which sounds so strange right but with the lord it's so beautiful and it connects us so much deeper. And I just, I wanted to share that. Um, if you're suffering from anything, any physical ailments or health issues, I just encourage you the way John encouraged me, the way the Lord encouraged me, embrace it. Carry your cross. Don't fear. I know we all have different beliefs. A lot of it makes, some things make me sad because I know that we are commanded to watch. I know that the Lord is coming soon. I'm convicted of that. And not all of you are. And I just pray that the Lord comes out to everyone and just reveals, reveals the truth. Now, we don't know when, we don't know what day, what hour, but we know that we're in the season. Whether that's in a month, in a week, in a day, this year, next year. We know that we're in the season. We're in the generation. Um, I'm not going to get into pre, mid, post trib stuff. I don't get into those debates. Uh, to me, it's a waste of time. We're command to watch, period. The Lord's coming soon. That's it. Um, my focus is on the Lord. My focus is on sharing things with you guys and loving each other because we're part of the body of Christ. I'd, I'm not going to get in the middle of... Um, a lot of debates and stuff because the enemy is just he's really trying to split apart the body and I don't support what he's doing in the body of Christ right now how the enemy is trying to uh, divide the body um, have people condemning each other and nitpicking each other I don't support what he's doing there so I just want to get that out there but Guys, this was just such a beautiful gift, and I feel like it was not just for me, but for all of you. So, remember, God loves us all. Abba Father loves us all, equally, but differently. And it's just so personal, you know? Like, I love reading these things in the Bible. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But it's like when he comes to either through someone else, I still get, you know, excited, or through me, or whatever, with messages like this for us. It's just so... It's another kind of personal. And I just really appreciate you, Abba. <sighs> Lord, I just ask that you bless all of these viewers, all of my brothers and sisters, Lord. <sighs> and this is all for you. May all the glory go to you, Lord. And we just thank you today. And we just worship you and praise you. And we appreciate you, Abba. Though things are falling apart, though much darkness is spreading, you said that we would be a light, Lord. I ask that you continue to use us as vessels for you, for your Holy Spirit to shine through as a light in this darkness, in this chaos and deception that's sweeping over the world. Please cover us. Please give us discernment, wisdom, and understanding. Open our ears and eyes that we may see and hear of your truth, Abba, that we may have hearts and minds to receive of your truth as well. In Jesus' name, by your blood, Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless, guys. Bye.